and news of such a victory could bring a French alliance. But of course, the enemy will be blockading our coasts. A ship must be prepared to break that blockade and carry my news to Ben Franklin in Paris. Yes, sir. Do you know of the ship Ranger now at Portsmouth? Aye, sir. Out of commission. No sails, no rigging, without a crew. If I can steal the Ranger, could you refit, steal a crew, and make ready for the welcome news that I am sure will be ours? With the help of Providence, the inspiration of my Commander-in-Chief, yes, sir. The ship Ranger, in the opinion of every person who has seen her, is looked upon to be one of the best cruisers in America. Any gentlemen volunteers who have a mind to take an agreeable voyage may, by entering on board the above ship Ranger, meet with every civility they can possibly expect. All reasonable traveling expenses will be allowed and the advance money will be paid from now on. How much? That's all Vitling prize money and in advance $40 stable-bodied seaman, 20 to landsman. Are you an American friend? Plenty. Me red cherry, Narragansett Indian. Me no shipman, but plenty good with this. Put that thing away and make a mark here. I'm known as Gunner Lowry, A.B. and Gunner's mate. Been swallowing the anchor. But a mite of trouble with a local constable made me yearn for foreign travel again. Well, you better make a mark, too. Compton's filling rapidly. Oh, sorry looking lot, if you ask me. Work them hard, train them hard, and keep them happy. What's this? A cat already? Yes, sir. My orders. I'll take this article for the time being. Mr. Simpson, if you please, come to my cabin. discipline must be maintained in our new service. Degradation and brutality need not be part of punishment. During my entire cruise of the Providence, our greetings weren't rigged a single time for flogging. There's no cat of nine tails aboard because I threw the only one we had into the sea the first day out. You do likewise now, sir. Immediately. words with you, Mr. Simpson. Influence ashore apparently made you second in command of this ship. But now that you're serving with me, I intend to see you get the experience that I think necessary. And, sir, experience will be your lot soon. Our course to France will be a northerly one. At this time of year... Yes, gale, weather, ice, hot on both ship and men. But the dispatches we carry will make a record crossing. Driver, carry all the canvas we can without losing our mess. Come in. Marines have fallen in for inspection, sir. I'll be out directly, Wally, sir. You may return to your duties, Mr. Simpson. Attention! Hoist away. Present arm. Simpson that we would have a rough and fast passage, but he does not worry about the elements. His main concern is whether the new flag of the United States will be recognized by the French authorities. 
We shall know tomorrow when we arrive off Brest. States. Yes, sir. It's important that I see him. This is a the DR commissioner receives. Perhaps you're kind enough to give me your card. Card? I have no card. But monsieur, monsieur, please, 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 monsieur, 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 I'm Captain John Paul Jones of the United States Ship Ranger, and I'm here to see Dr. Benjamin Franklin on urgent business. Oh, we? Oui. <laughs> My dear sir, many people, diplomats, bankers, scientists, standard citizens, etc., etc., always wish to see the commissioner on what they think is urgent matter. But this is our for rest and meditation. But I have dispatches. I'll take that. I've come 3,000 miles to deliver these dispatches, mister. Now take yourself to Dr. Franklin and tell him that I'm here. Immediately. Did I hear the name John Paul Jones? You did, sir. That's your service. Welcome, Captain. I've been wanting to meet you ever since reading of your exploits in the Providence. Come in. Come in. You must have had a rapid crossing. And a rough one, I warrant, at this season. This is my cargo, sir. Thank you. Sailoring is a vocation which I frankly cannot understand. I'm in thorough agreement with the great Dr. Johnson who remarked that living in a ship had all the confinement and discomfort of a jail without any of its shelter or its safety. A major victory. Captain, you've made the sun rise twice this morning. We'll celebrate. I'll order champagne, Captain. Champagne? And I was ordering tea. Ah, but this is a great day, Amy. I'll tell you all about it. But first, permit me to present Captain John Paul Jones, Mademoiselle Amy de Talisson. Your servant, ma'am. Champagne, and quickly. Amy, American arms have won a great, I might say, a decisive victory. And this gallant officer is the first to bring the news. Ammunition for me at court, eh? His Majesty will be greatly impressed. And you, Captain, why do you intend to lodge whilst in Paris? Well, sir, I... You will stay here with me. It is only fit. Meanwhile, you must be fatigued and weary from your travels. What are your first needs, Captain? A bath. And the larger and more heavily gunned ship, sir. Your request would put us both in hot water, my fire-eating friend. There is a frigate being built in Holland, but you can't have her. Such a move would embarrass the King of France. Well, I thought King Louis was friendly to our cause. Granted, but he's also on the best of terms with Holland. And the Dutch have a treaty with England. You, monsieur, have a great deal to learn. I didn't come here to play or study politics, ma'am. I came here to fight. If you can't find me a better ship, sir, I'll sail in the Ranger. My orders permit me to cruise where I want. Patience, Captain, patience. I'll have to deal with the court. And while I'm doing so, I take it this is your first visit to Paris, Captain? Yes, sir. Then the young lady is right. No gentleman's education is complete unless he has some knowledge of this fair city. While I am performing my duties at court, and that will take some time, perhaps Mademoiselle will consent to act as guide and instructress. And now a toast to that glad news which you brought, Captain.
actually intend to invade the British Isles. I do. From your little ship? From my little ship. But it hasn't been done since William the Conqueror and he was only a king. I suspect you are a fool. Don't be angry. I love fools. To them, nothing is impossible. I'm glad you think so, ma'am. Does Dr. Franklin know about your plan? He does. And he has given his consent. He said if we were half a century younger, he'd enlist in my crew. Don't you see, ma'am? Mine is no wild and practical scheme. A landing anywhere on the English coast, no matter how small, it'd shake the gentleman in Whitehall as nothing yet has. It'd be so unexpected. Ships of the Royal Navy would have to be diverted to home waters while I play will of the wisp. Popular opinion is not against the war. Many an Englishman's against it anyhow. Boys' insurance rates will rocket so high that merchants will grumble and protest. Why, well, Captain John Paul Jones plays Will of the Wisp. Exactly. When do you depart for your ship? Tomorrow. Early. You will take care, Captain. Come back safe. on the same course until nightfall. In the meantime, organize a conference in my cabin. Aye, aye, sir. Gentlemen, that land looming off our bow is a port of Whitehaven. I know it well. During the night hours, I plan to enter the harbor and burn all the shipping we find. The port will surely be fortified on it, sir. Correct. There is a fort and I intend to capture it. How? We'll lower two boatloads of volunteers before dawn. You, Simpson, will take one boat to burn the shipping. Fallingsford will command the landing party to take the fort. Any comments? I think it'd be a mad scheme. If we're caught, we'll be hanged as pirates. My plan is it will not be caught. Your plan calls for volunteers. I do not intend to be one. I command this ship, Mr. Simpson. By virtue of my rank and commission given me by Congress. But I urge none of these considerations upon you. I'd only say that I command this ship by virtue of the fact that I'm the better man. The fact which I am cheerfully willing to demonstrate to you at your pleasure. Well, Exford, you'll take the boat that I'd assigned to Mr. Simpson. I'll take the landing party ashore myself. That is all, gentlemen. 